Hello. I am here. All right. Just uh, double check something here. All right. Here. We're off. We're off. We're live. All right. So, hi, guys. Welcome to episode two of Jamaican Matters. Tonight, I am here with Danielle Buzra from the Maroon community. And tonight, we're going to be talking about the tension between the Maroons of a compound and the Prime Minister. I just learned a short while ago that there's a meeting between the government and the Maroons and the chief was excluded from that meeting. So we're going to get into several topics here about the Maroons and I welcome you all to share the live and let's get into it. So Bozra, yes, introduce yourself to the people real quickly and let's get uh, into it. I am nothing greater than being the son of Sadie and the son of Bobby and the grandson of Cinderella and the great grandson of Bowie and then I come from Maroon. That's my greatest claim to fame. Next to being born on this prestigious magical island, you know, schools and, and allocates and accomplishments are mere formalities that we go through while living here. The fundamental is that I am first and foremost a child of this island who wants and desires the best for this island. That's what really matters. Okay. So tell me, did you spend all of your life in the community, in the Maroon community? No, actually, I, I grew up in Kingston, Kingston 6, um, went to Mona Prep, Woolman Boys School, Friars School, University of West Indies, University of Havana, Cuba, University of Salamanca, Spain, Monterey Institute of International Affairs. I've traveled to quite a number of countries. My daddy used to play cricket for the West Indies, so he afforded me the experience of the world. So, but I always spent every holiday in a compound knowing who I was. And so I remember even at Mona Prep, Culture Day, I'll never forget my most profound experience, Culture Day at Mona Prep. And I remember distinctly being the only black child other than the African diplomat children who brought a culture other than slavery to Mona Prep at Culture Day. I was with my abe, with my bush, with my square drum, my different historical items and cultural items and i understood that this is fundamentally what makes me have any potential for greatness the fact that i belong to these people that's where it's at okay so the first time we met um was at the protest the first protest in albert town no. long time that <laughs> yeah that was in 2019 it was in uh late i believe it was late july of 2019 right. when the first very first big protest about the mining um and the maroons came out it was a fantastic gathering really and it was a stance that the maroons and the surrounding community decided to take against the government and their plan to mine the cockpit country and the, the local media was there um there were other um protests after that one i saw where there was an envelope delivered to the parliament mm -hmm. to the government of jamaica against the mining so what are your thoughts on the tension that's currently happening between the maroons and the government um in reality the tensions that are that are presently around us it's a matter of um of the refusal of, of, of the government of Jamaica and the Prime Minister and the members of Parliament and the, 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 the Attorney General and all these other functionaries to acknowledge truthfully this, their status to the Jamaican people that the fact that the government serves to the Crown and all appointments as in the Governor General, as in the Governor of the Bank of Jamaica, the Commission of Police, all these appointments are crown positions that means if you go on the internet it says that the queen is the head of state and one has to acknowledge that the failure to clarify to provide clarity to the jamaican people that the document jamaica doesn't have a constitution 
The document that the government operates on is called the Order of Jamaica 1962, ordering council in chambers from the Queen. The word constitution is in brackets on the document, so it's not really there. So it is not a constitution, it is an order from the Crown. That means you are still operating as subservient and functionists for the British Crown. While the Maroons were surrendered to by the British Crown, in 1962, in 1738. Okay, so, I mean, in in all my life, I've never really seen the Maroon community had any kind of standoff with the Jamaican government. So what do you think is the cause of this? And it's been ongoing for the last two years that I've witnessed where the Maroon people are coming out of their communities to protest against the government. I would think it is a matter of evolution of time and experience, meaning it was about to happen. It may not have happened in my grandmother's and mother's time because my grandmother was the first generation of Maroons to get any schooling. My great grandfather had to take a Christian name in order for her to get to school. My mother went to school, got a scholarship, went to school in Kingston. We are just at now this third generation of quality edification and understanding of the intricacies of the Western world. Prior to that, we had nothing to do with the world because Jamaica was under colonialism and we had no reason to go down there. We had food and land while the slaves had to get, take what Bakra gave them. So it is just at this time and crooks and points in our traversing through, through history that we are here now. It's almost like if, if, if I was living on your father's land and it may have been there for 10 generations, but the, the rightful heirs are at the point where you can now articulate and stand the ground on their truthful um, inheritance. Okay, so can you define for us sovereignty? Because that's the statement that the Prime Minister made last week is that there is no, there is no sovereign, sovereign state within Jamaica. There's no, um, there's no two states is what he said. I don't know if he misunderstood sovereignty, but I want you to explain to the people what it is that sovereignty really means. And before we even go there, let me go forward to the Prime Minister's very words that he himself uttered previously, right? On the 29th, on, on, in, in um, 2019, at the Hong Kong 6th January celebration in 2019, um, the Prime Minister said, on the 6th of January 2019 at 11.24, PM, he posted, and I quote, on this day, 281 years ago, Captain Current Kojo proudly stood and watched as emissaries of the defeated British forces, forces ascended to a compound to sign a treaty that would establish the community as on equal standing with the then British-led government. The treaty, in the words of the Prime Minister, from his Facebook post, the treaty was between two sovereign nations. That's what he said. At the Prime Minister Facebook post. So he then acknowledged that it was two sovereign nations. And I continue, he says, at the surrender to the Maroons of a compound land, which defined, board, which defined borders and agreed political establishment. Today, we celebrate a man who understood his mission and purpose as, as the freedom of his people and their right to self-determination. Let us, like Kojo, rise up to action in the interest of our people. From Andrew Holness's Facebook post, January the 6th, 2019, at 11.24 p.m. So, so then, that begins the need for this discussion. We can't hang up now. It's done. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> so, Olan, do you think that there are some factions of the, of the Jamaican society that, you know, they, they utter some, some hostile language toward the Maroon people? I don't know if it's, you know, perception based on what they hear the government say and stuff like that. But... Do you think that some people are mis misunderstanding um, or, or have this idea that sovereignty means that you are totally 
independent in a sense that you shouldn't want anything from the government you shouldn't have anything to do with the government you know kind of like an extreme self-governance kind of thing all right let us look at the incidences in reality in today's real world of states within states we go to the most famous unknown monaco owned, run by the garibaldi family in the middle of france france has never disputed their right if a French tennis player chooses to have Monaco citizenship, then he is beyond the taxation of the French state. They don't fight it. There is also San Marino in Italy, in the mountains of Italy, when you go to Rimini and turn up into the mountains. I've been there, I've been to Monaco. I've looked at their documents as part of my quest to pursue clarity and alacrity in this particular area. I've been to both these places. So these are existing realities of states within states. Let us come closer to the in the Caribbean. There is St. Martin. Half of the island is owned by France. Half is owned by Holland. So these are existing realities in international political spheres that adhere to these realities. So it is not far-fetched. What it seems to be is that, um, unfortunately, it's almost as if black people hate to see another black man in a position. Of liberation while they are they're like you have to be subjected like us else it's not fair mm -hmm. <clears throat> so on january 6th that just passed you guys were going to have your regular you know celebration there and the police came out the day before or two days prior and very morning. on yes, the very morning morning by people Yes, and they said that the event should not happen because of the whole COVID thing. And the Maroon chief and the community decided that they were still going to have it. And I heard one lady came on the news and she said, look, we would like for this to go on because not now go on the COVID pandemic, you know, our local hustling. It was kind of like also an economic benefit for the Maroon, for the Akompon community. So the, 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 the community decided to go ahead with the celebration um and then it's like the government was sort of miffed about it and then the police ended up there and then someone ended up being shot and killed so right. tell us what happened there all right um one of the biggest things that needs to be addressed is if the british surrendered to us in 1738 at 1738 all of the members of parliament and their, 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 their ancestors would have been on the plantation subjected while we were surrendered to by the British. So you're asking us, the children and descendants of a people who have always been free, to now put ourselves under the subjugation and jurisdiction of the people who work for the people we defeated. We are 1738. We cannot um give in to and be overridden by a 1962 state of jamaica crafted by the british crown let us never forget that the so-called constitution we, we have the video every heritage week of buster man and jenny jenny flecking in front of princess margaret taking the document so you don't feel like um and I'm just asking this out of fairness. You don't think that the, the Maroon community should have acknowledged whatever protocols the government put for the people of Jamaica? I can't come to your house and expect to make any decision with your servant. The fact that the Crown is the head of state and those in Parliament, however elected, are merely servants of the British Crown. The Prime Minister, even after the two million Jamaican vote him, is not the Prime Minister until the Queen's representatives, the Governor General, says it is so. Mr. Golding, after winning the PNP's election race, was not the leader of the opposition, even though he was voted for by the people, until the Governor General signed it in. So you're asking us to be subject to be subjugated by the subject. Here. Okay, so the situation that happened down there in the Akompong community, why was the police called up there? 
Okay, that situation is rather technical because these were police there. There were no police at the security. These were police, one of whom is a Maroon, and his friends, his squaddies, who came. They were there in the day, up and down, doing the ritual. We saw him down. And then now, in the evening, when the dance was going on, there was, they were going into the dance. There was a Maroon soldier who lived in the community who was at the gate of the dance as the gate man. Okay. Remember, it's 500 Jamaican dollars to go into the dance. Now, every 6th of January, there's the day crowd and the night crowd. It's two different crowds. Yes. The night crowd just starts streaming in. The policeman and his squaddies are, are coming into the dance. The Maroon gate man, member of the JDF, lives in the community. Says to the Maroon police, I know you, you come in, your squad is after pay. And in the, um, the erroneously assumed power that the police seem to operate in and the impunity with which they operate in the Jamaica and a general, they think that shouldn't go on, it created a fracas. Okay. The man who was shot is a Maroon. He sees non Maroons who he does not know are police because they're in plain clothes. Physically abusing this maroon who him run up and down and play football with. What do you think his reaction is? To jump in to defend it. Then okay. the police now pull them fire out. And that is the root of the issue. So it, it has a lot to do with the, the impunity that has been psychologically implanted into those who operate for the British Crown. Okay, I see what you mean. So let me talk to you about the issue of crime. That is a hot topic in a Jamaica right now. We have and three murders in 300 years. Don't they are. Three murders in 300 years. I was just going to say, the last time I was there, went up to a compound and hung up for a while. That's one of the things I was talking to the elders about. Um, one of them told me that you can leave your door open here for as long as you want, and not, nobody will go into your place and steal. We don't have burglary up here. We don't have... Oh. So what is the difference between... The, the, the safety of their compound community as opposed to the general population in the Jamaican society. Why is it so hostile outside of there, but not among you guys? Um, there are the issues, as we, anywhere people are, there are going to be issues, but at the end of the day, it, um, we understand our history and our, our inevitable connectivity as a people together. One way or the other, we have some blood connection. Maybe your great great grandfather did read my great great grand auntie. Whichever way, there is some. So we never allow it to go beyond the point because at the end of the day, it's fundamental that we maintain this for ourselves. So we have always put it in context. There are the natural occurrences, like I said to my son. I said, all the Chinese who die in, who were killed in Chinatown in New York were killed mostly by Chinese. These Occurrences happen wherever people are. The most Indians are killed by Indians. You understand me? Yeah. So it's just a matter of understanding that this thing is you and it means something to you. I guess a lot of it has to do with the fact that why does you make the people that you say this not is there for them, so why preserve it? They're not getting any true benefit from it. Yeah, and a lot of people would um, associate the high rates in crime in the Jamaica society to poverty, but in the Mar in the Akompong community, there's not a lot of monetary wealth, right? A lot of the people up there, them basically survive on farming. Because when I was leaving, them give me breadfruit. There's no, there's, hey, when I was leaving, I didn't want to crock us a of food. And they were telling me that this is all the, the no only for shop, no up there, no only for meat shop and all these things. So it's not like there's great wealth where people are not you know you don't have a mega of, right exactly so i don't know I, I don't buy the idea that it's poverty i think it's just a totally different mindset and different psychological view of your fellow men you know so go ahead and then you see the understanding that every negative action will impact on the community which is yours while in greater jamaica for example the average person does not live where their grandmother was born. They will to tell you to them grandmother did come from this and their mother there and then to meet a man and then born here. And they probably will move to another parish for work or whatever or overseas. So there's no 
what we would call historical continuity. Okay. It keeps you rooted. Okay. So let me ask you, the people that live in a compound, for example, at, for example are they are they renters? Are they living on family property? How does that work? And can anybody move in? No. Well, first and foremost, there are only two land owners in Jamaica, the Maroons and the British Crown. Everybody else, if you own a property in Jamaica, or you think you own it, you recognize that the title says land of older. A distinction in law between a, a holder and a owner. Okay. Only two land owners, the Maroons and the British Crown. So because we understand that we are never homeless. We have... We, we, for example, when you want to understand that this town, where the town is now, is what we call New Town. My great grandfather, Bowie, was born in Old Town, which is a whole other part further back in the bush. We just progressively moved here within those four generations, coming closer to their world. So, so we're we never homeless. Yeah. There's so much land that any young man can get some food and get some cement and block and has a place to create a home. Oh, I see. So let's say you marry a lady and you want to bring her of course you're going to bring her with you as a new wife into the community that's okay that's yes and our, we expect our daughters to bring to bring sons to us the daughters must go out there and bring sons to us okay and okay. We do have, that is that is part and parcel of what it was there is a, for example great maroons like for example who when he was when he died it was like 58 children and when we talk to the elders, they say, what did you do to get so much girl? The fact of the matter is, is back in the day, and after emancipation and the end of, of slavery and during independence, the first, the only landholders was the Maroons. So when my great granduncle them got on a Santa Cruz and bought two girls and said, oh, my life, the two of them, each one to get a give me a fit to make you not hear call that. They've not left him. Because they've not no black man down there, so I have nothing to give them. Oh, okay. Okay. All the markets in Jamaica were started by Maroons. They could not eat macro food. We had food and provided it and sold to them. Okay. I like that you guys are being on, big on farming. On a farm, on a own food. I mean, I think it's great. But let me ask you this now. Are you guys, after those two major protests against the Jamaica government and that whole pushback, from the Maroons uh, toward the government. Do you guys feel comfortable now that the government won't come in on mine? Because I learned that there was um, like a new survey done since this government came in where the Maroon borders were redefined. Is that correct? No, the government unilaterally attempted to violate the United Nations Charter for the Rights of Indigenous People, which says we must be consulted on anything. This, this um, is made most apparent in the United Nations UNAD program, cannabis program that was given to Jamaica. It was the cannabis growers under the People's National Party government who started this push. When the Jamaica Labour Party government came in, the cannabis growers went to the United Nations and said, we need a program that carries us so we can understand the natural progression of the natural farmer, not the CLA controlled systematic one. The United Nations said to them, we are going to give you that program for Jamaica. However, there are two people on the island and you cannot marginalize the indigenous and offer one to the Maroons. That is the United Nations acknowledging that. So what is this thing about redefining the borders where mining is concerned? Not the Maroon borders. He's trying to, again, obliterate our existence. Because um, to, to, to define our borders, you have to come to us. You were a slave on the plantation. Your grandfather was a slave on a plantation while we are free. How can you tell us where the land stops and ends? You are not the owner of the land. You are a mere servant of the crown. Again, I cannot come to your house and your help and your yard and try to tell me how to run your house and you alone may I take talk from. Okay. Because, um, so with the mining, there were environmentalists who did their, their homework and basically said that, you know, the way that they wanted to mine, that it would affect you guys 
And so that whole environmental concern came about. So where are you guys now? Are you guys comfortable now in that the government won't come in and come trouble on with the mining? We're not comfortable. They're, 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 um, they, they post, the president's administration possess, um, possesses a serious level of arrogance and is most obnoxious in its outlook towards us. So what we're aware of is that because in this day and age, there's international eyes on the issue, they have to step quite gingerly because if you marginalize or abuse the indigenous people, some shall go and lick them from left, right, and center. We are not desirous of anything untoward reaching the Jamaican masses because of their errors. So they are tactfully aware of that. You understand me? Mm -hmm. And it's, like I said, it's an arrogance where if the Jamaican government is, is working for the Crown and operates on a document given to them by the Crown, then anything that they want to say, you're defending the government, you're basically just standing up for the white people crown, for the British crown, for the former oppressors that is under their auspices that the Jamaican government operates until we become a fully independent republic. Then we have to acknowledge that the Queen is the head of state, and if the, the, the head of state and her office surrender to the Maroons in the kinder tree. Like we say, the help and the Ghana can't tell we out for around the yard. Right. Okay, so you're basically saying that at this time, because there are international eyes watching, and there are people in the, in the Jamaican society who are willing to step out there in droves and protest, the government is kind of backing off a little bit. I wouldn't know if they're backing off. I can't claim to know another man's intention. What I know, is that if they are attempting to try something, we, we are going to win. First and second is already ours, you know. They can squabble for something after third. I say this in the understanding of um, there is the Inter-American Course of Human Rights to which Jamaica is a signatory. It is the human rights arm of the, um, the Organization of America. It has a previous ruling, a precedent set in the court, in the commission. As, this, as it pertains to the Saramaka Maroons of Suriname and the attempts of the government of Suriname to mine their land for bauxite, the court ruled in favor of the Saramaka Maroons, thus having set precedence on any further issues like that. Okay. So we are, like I said, while they squabble and double, we are sure that they are going to have to fight for something after third because first and second is already our one. Okay. So this meeting that um that the chief that chief Curry was excluded excluded from, do you know anything about it? What is this meeting about? All right, I'm going to say something. This is because they were planning this meeting. You know that is last night I was released from Alligator Park Lockup. I was picked up Friday at Speaker office in Mandalu. Because they know what they were planning and they want to try to get key players off the zone. Let me share this with you. I'm not discussing it. I've never said it. Let me tell it to your public. Last okay. night. Go ahead. I was picked up. I was released from the alligator pan. Lock up. Picked up in Mandeville and shot me down to alligator pan and keep me in a hole in there. For what? Say that again. What? I don't have a clue, but we understand when we are fair. Luckily, I am the kind of person that the moment I have my maroon family, them and so who is police on top of the ball. What are they doing with him? What is he here for? They, 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 um, I was approached by a bailiff. That means they understand that I'm not the kind of man they want to attempt to carry to any court. So they try to use a shortcut. This is all because. No, as this thing is unraveling, I'm realizing, oh, it was because of this thing. Because I was wondering what. There is not me alone. There are other Maroons who were made after. There have been comments made to Chief Curry and other firm Maroons and connections made and people saying things and contacting and saying all kinds of things. You understand me? Mm -hmm. But the great thing is that you attempt to throw Basra to the wolves and I come back leading the pack because the entire, the entire time I was there, I was schooling the members of the Jamaican police force and letting them go on my videos and they, they spent their night asking me to edify them as to the, 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 the real issues of law and the legality of who they are as, as a citizen of the state of Jamaica. 
but so they, they just, just released government. you? Pardon? They just released you on your own? Um, yeah, they, 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 um, they came up with a scheme and they realized that that scheme is not really going to hold it. Like I said, I was visited by special arms of, of the government, well masked and asking me all kind of questions and I were just rebutting them fearlessly. You understand me? Because as we say, we know, habeas corpus, give me myself, you can't control me and you're in violation and the whole world know that I'm here. Or at least the, my family members and Chief Curry and the members of the whole entire Maroon community know that so they've been picked up the end in Mandeville. Okay. So, with this meeting now, tell us about it if you can. What is this meeting that the government is having with the Maroons excluding the Chief? Um, it, it is the typical divide and conquer that other Maroon leaders have subjected themselves to. To show you how dangerous it is. Um, Colonel Pink of the Scottsdale Maroons, who was illegally and unlawfully ousted by a Jamaica Labour Party representative, Mr. Lally Bodier, to be the now chief of Scottsdale, is at present languishing in a lockup in St. Mary. And none of the Maroon chiefs, neither Mr. Lally Bodier, nor, 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 nor Mr. Mr. Wallace Sterling, nor his, none of them have made any attempt to find out what is happening to this honorable man. Whether or not he's chief or was chief, he's a farm, he is an indigenous national. And they, they have sat quietly knowing he's been languishing there for almost three weeks, going to a month, and they have said nothing. So, what are they like him up for? And look here. Please, me, I like somebody find out for me. Why is Colonel Pink, Rudolph Pink, in a St. Mary locker? Okay, we'll ask after the live, too. So, this meeting, um, you're saying it's it, there's there's nothing. Divide and rule thing. Divide and rule, okay. But um, what's most unfortunate is, is that you know showing the true nature of the moral leaders who went to that meeting because if you had any semblance of who you are and any substance of character and soul, you'd have denied the prime minister and said. But them run gone like a, like a bunch of gladys. You understand? Oh, Integrity is a funny thing, you know. My father, as a West Indies cricketer, was the only man who did not take a million US dollars to go to South Africa during apartheid. Integrity. He come from Guinness Farm and never make a million US dollar fool him. What name? Arthur Barrett. Melbourne Cricket Club, Jamaica and West Indies bowler, spin bowler, the master of the googly, the few man, nobody else can bowl the ball when he can do again and make the ball turn in a mid-year to googly. He mastered that. But he had integrity and refused a million US dollars, a house and a car, rather than go to South Africa doing apartheid as an honorary wife to make a million US dollars. Oh. So integrity is, is a very important because my only reason why i'm here doing this why i stood up is because of my integrity that yeah. they have global options in front of me as does as does as does um the ceo of a compound news mr dennis foster um as does chief curry as i initiated man we have global options the only reason why we are here and seriously defending this is because our integrity to ourselves and those who came before us and what they stood for and killed for. So, um, what is there? Is there a demand or is there an expectation of the Maroon community now of the government of Jamaica? No, we expect nothing of the servants in your house. What we know for sure is that at the end of this, it will all unravel to us. Arbitration in a court of international jurisprudence. Here you are arguing, we have to get a third party, neutral. And then once it goes there, the fact that the Jamaican government is in several breaches of the United Nations Charter for the Rights of Indigenous People, the fact that the Jamaican government is in breach of its very own Order of Jamaica slash Constitution. Section 4 of the beginning of the Constitution says anything that was in place before August the 2nd, 1962. Stands after 9th, August the 2nd, 1962. 
Before August the second nineteen sixty two, they could not have passed in Jamaica. They had no autonomy over a land or any say over it. Ergo, after nineteen sixty August the second nineteen sixty two, they still don't. And to attempt to say that it's in violation of the constitution, we can carry Mr. Holness and his cumberlongs to um, constitutional courts, which I must remind you is free. So any one of the PNP lawyer them, or the UIC or any arbitrary lawyer, we can't right now we're playing the trade. The enemy of my enemy is my bosom friend. Okay. We can take the government to constitutional court just for breaching that to attempt to ignore the Maroons. Is in breach of the very constitution. We need to be taken to constitutional court and dealt with summarily for this breach. Because had you or I attempted to breach the constitution, there would be no hesitation. So the Maroon communities, they do receive funding from the government, whether it's funds donated from outside sources, right? Most of that funding is not from the pockets of the government. Here's what happens. Because there's not been the proper proceeding. Everything that comes for the Maroon, the government, not for themselves and collect the money and then give one little piece. Okay, okay. Because I know that in the United States, the Native Americans, they receive funding and they have their own thing going on where, you know, they dictate how their lives... Exactly. They run their casinos, they sell their cigarettes at their prices, they have their own cigarette factories, they do their own economic. This is, these, these rights are also a recognized and entrenched in the United Nations Charter for the Rights of Indigenous People. So to attempt to circumvent them looks very bad on the Jamaican government. Terrible, 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 terrible. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Um, the the Akompong community, I think it's it's a very good um, kind of nature getaway kind of thing, you know? So I was wondering, when you Google Jamaica, you don't see Akompong as a tourist destination. However, when I was there, you guys have a museum, you have tour guides, you have... Um, uh, cabins because I met some British people, some Canadian people, them come and them explore the marijuana thing and you know the whole community and the history. Why don't we see more of that where oh. we can appeal to people who want to come as tourists, but then I want to come at a big resort that maybe they want to come and indulge in our culture, you know? These people find us in us, invariably, they always do. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. How the heck they did they find us? <laughs> because they, they know what they're looking for. They're not looking to go to a Sanders or a, um, one of them Spanish hotels. They've probably done that from they were in their teens. That's, that's past and past past for them. They're looking another experience. We have that experience. So while they may not promote it for us, it is, it is a functional part of our reality, irrespective of what they think. Because again, historically, we precede them, and our history is out there known to the world. To give you an understanding you know, is that a man came here with his wife, you know, an African man, and he spent like three weeks in the community, living in a house, living with a family, walking in the community, going to the bars. It is when he was leaving, and we saw police and bright lights and big car come, that he gave everybody his card and we realized he was the president of Kenya coming to visit this historical place that they know about in Africa for his vacation with his wife. Oh, that's interesting. And we have seen, we can tell you tons of stories like that. Um, Prince Salih Selassie, when he came to Jamaica on an official visit, what did he do with his three days? Came to a compound town, because they recognize who we are. It's very, so, I would encourage anybody to take a trip there. It's just, Tranquility is an understatement. It's beautiful. <laughs> I mean, when you talk about coming in there, all you hear are just birds and streams. You don't hear people. I was wondering if people actually are there um, in the community. But if you have any information, like if you have anything about, you know, your your tour guides or whatever, let us share it on social media because you don't oh, see well, a lot of that. Contact. Um Go on the website, contact a Hong Kong news, contact um the Hong Kong government's website. Let us know. We have we, we do daily we do tours, we do campfires, you can you can tell us what you want and we'll prepare for you. We also offer what we call as a community, we offer um health inclusive tourism, meaning it's a hit, right? So 
if you have nervous problems and you're coming, you want to spend two weeks, and you tell us you have nervous problems and you have kidney problems, it means when you come, every morning as you reach, like, give you some, some um, sarsaparilla and, and sour sap leaf tea. And we will provide you with a bath. We'll probably take you to a spring where the sulfur water is and make you drink some and give you some beer and that for your back problem. We will address these issues. When you have left a compound, we will package some of these necessary herbs and send you to maintain this health balance that you have found. It's called Health Inclusive Tourism. Hit. We have it. We are functional doing it. Now, in a global, globalized um, mass media internet world, we don't necessarily have to go to the conventional channels in order to garner that um, marketplace. It's, it's available to us once you have a, a basic phone in your hand. Okay, so in a compound, I know that you guys have a school. I didn't see a clinic or any health center, right? There is one in need some help. And as we saw that, um, we have been asking as a community chief coroner to go over there asking for assistance to help us put it back up. There together. used to be one? Yeah, man. Look, oh, really? We have the equipment taken over by politicians and taken. And oh it, God, so it closed down completely. Because I didn't have see the space here. Yes, so ma'am. Like, when you guys get sick, one of them, you use the... We have to on the or Black River. Oh, okay. What are the so things? what about COVID? Do you guys have any COVID cases in our compound? No, because when one understands that the kind of food we eat, and everybody here, whether you realize it or not, you know the herbal medicine, because... As soon as you a little sickness take you remember where you your granny and mask will and that's the person they say, you know. And you go back to it, you know. We go to the bush long before we go buy a fendic. Right, yeah. You understand me? So we live this, you know, this is not a posing thing for us. This is just who we are, the only thing we really know how to be. You so know? there's no cases of COVID up there? No. Okay. But you don't have a lot of people, except for January 6th, of course, but you don't have a lot of people from the outside world coming in there unless it's like... No, no, let's just look at it this way. Forget the people coming in. The fact that everybody goes to Santa Cruz and Magati and, 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 um, and Black River and Junction and, Man and Mandible and walk up in these crowded markets. If there was anything to catch, I think one of us would have caught it. Or I guess the maroon duffy, they'd be afraid of a duffy. <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> so um where do you see this thing ending? I mean, clearly, you know, with a meeting, the government must be seeking some kind of middle ground with you guys. No, that's None not middle ground. That's an attempt at manipulation. To attempt to exclude one who's been the most conversant to you on the subject, that's an attempt at manipulation. We will call it for what it is. I will not disrespect my father's lunch money. He worked rather hard for it and gave me the best of his earnings, I will make sure people respect it. It is not anything other than an attempt at manipulation. You do, you believe it, do you believe the, in the chief as the, as the leader of a company? Do you believe that he will always stand up for principles and what's right for the Maroon people? Officers always, and I see no reason why I should doubt whether Richard Curry will stand up. Yeah, he's in born in a compound. i born in a Kingston, you know. He's born up here, you know. As much as we both traversed out of Maruto and I was educated. You understand me? Like I said, the man of the world open to you. The fact that he's here, who I never question that. I question what the outside people bring in. So you think he will always stand? I always trust no other child because it is in his blood. A pig has a grunt. A pig has nothing more than grunt. Okay, okay, okay. Well, thank you for joining us. Um, is there anything you would like to let the people know or anything you would like to say? Yeah, man. Um, in a Hong Kong lies one of the greatest in, in the indigenous territories lies one of the greatest opportunities for Jamaica. A true self liberation and economic greatness. Let us consider the realities. For example, Jamaica people, as I stated before, water is more expensive than gasoline in every single country in the world. Let us look at Jamaica. A, five, a 500 milliliter, a half a liter bottle of water in Jamaica is 100 Jamaican dollars retail. That makes a liter of water $200. Which gas station have any gas for $200? Water, 
water is more expensive than gas, even in Jamaica. Now, the cost is counting. Since we have been having this conversation, 44 minutes and 58, 45 minutes, it, there are millions of gallons of fresh water has run out of this mountain. True, true, true. Real well. So I even said to the Prime Minister, I said, this is all those people you gave mining licenses, let them know it can't happen, we cannot die, kill the country. So we will convert those mining licenses into water extraction leases. And if you sell the water, you will make five to ten times more than you would have made from the dirt. If you're in this for business, come make some money. If you didn't look for make ten thousand dollars, let me show you how to make a million and let's not be stupid. Marcus Mosiah Garvey, intelligence rules the world. And ignorance will always bear the burden. What's the population of their compound community? All right, we have uh, probably a little over a thousand people in the community. But considering that island wide, for example, the report of this was 2,800 people and plus. These are Maroons who live all around. We're not even counting the Maroons who live overseas and their children and children who come and know that this is their yard. We have not, and then we have the extent of the Andes of Kumpung community, the reality of the total maroon population of Jamaica. Because we cannot, we're not going to disenfranchise the rights of the other maroon communities because of the errors of their individual leaders. We are always still one. Yeah. So, um, the Kumpung people, do they normally vote in the general elections and even the um, local elections of the Jamaica government? Because, because they have been tricked into having Jamaican birth certificate. When you consider that my mother was born in a Kong Kong, right? But my mother was issued a Jamaican birth certificate. That is the utterance of fraud documents on part of the Jamaican state. When my mother and others like her who were born in a Kong Kong came to, to them, they should have said, look here, what a different, you know? Go and sort out on the thing for themselves. Let us show them how to do it. Rather than that, they try to co-opt us and assimilate us into their schematic. We hear your sister Karen. She says, what's the role of women? Yes, and that's a very good question. No. That's why I'm in there. It is the women that have always been a part of our roots and our backbone. I mean, our greatest, we have, we have our great women farmers. Some of the best cannabis that is grown in this community is grown by women. It's as, as a daughter giving this to me. <laughs> yeah. So, because what? like, coming up there, I mean, so the women have always been because we have, we have, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't ever lose in this place with that attitude of female suppression. We never do that. Right. We don't yeah. understand that. Not when we gave Jamaica or Jamaica co-opted our um, Nana Apua Papua and co-opted her as nanny. There's nobody called nanny. Nanny is an old white lady that look after British people, pick the man. The African terminology, as per our cultural continuance as Ashanti people, would have been Nana. Okay. So the women have always been at the forefront of everything for us, of everything for us. So you got? Do you guys have a women's organization or anything like that down there? No, we don't even need it. The women live together. They are, they are the mothers and the children. We don't. These schematics are unnecessary in our world where you have been living three hundred years, understanding this balance. We don't even have to. It does, it does, it's not necessarily need enough an organization. Maybe as much as we don't want to interface with the wider world, it might present a good image. But it has always been just a typical understand, understood function. Function. When, for example, artists come here and Queen I feel and certain people come here, you think we don't have to tell the, the maroon elder woman and draw them away and show them. So when you have to go around they say you do that and you have to do that and you have to do that. It is just a natural part of who we are. Okay. So um People that are in a compound, how do they make a living? Do they leave, do, do you have people who leave and go work outside of the oh, community? Yeah, man, police officers, soldiers, engineers, pilots. Um, big up, big up to my cousins, they were doctors overseas, but come back to reality and the ones that went big up to Andrew. You understand? Okay. Who's a pilot for American Airlines? But no, same on my own. Okay. Who well, wants to do a compound? tourism stuff being shared out here because a personal experience you know um it really it really shows that the culture in a compound and the maroon community is very rich you know the people there's something to be said there 
the history. I mean, I, you know, social media is the way to go these days. Yeah. And like I said, the experience, I would love to see it on social media. Yeah, well, it, like I said, um, it's a part of a progression. Because here it is, we are, as the first generation of Maroon, to get access to their tertiary levels and clarity and the attendant issues that we must fix. As we attempt to do so, rather than embrace our attempts, what we find is an attack of it. Yeah. Give us the space and watch us unfold it. You understand? For example, as far as development goes, the African Union sent Dr. Chihumbari Kwa, Dr. Arikana Chihumbari Kwa, who was their ambassador for the West. 2017, she was in a compound, had a meeting with us, told us that the African Union has chosen and decided and desired to have make a compound in Western headquarters. Now, had, had the then colonel assigned 20 acres to them and said, there's your headquarters. 52 African, 54 African nations. Each of them would have made a million US dollars contribution to community development. Oh, they would have put in all the necessary infrastructure that they had that needed to have. Because they have the African Union headquarters, they have have an airport. They would have gathered all the engineers and all of that. What is it? We need electricity. It means the two, the three biggest African countries that made generators would have had the option to come and set up here and, and provide an electricity service. We would then be able, having our own electricity, be able to say to Sony, look here, we are giving you a factory space, electricity inclusive, come set up laptops here. And provide, we become the next work free zone for the whole to make everybody want. So allow us that progression. Because if you don't, you are going to go down by virtue as if we have to stand up and make a voice and call the world and make the world look like you yeah, attack us. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be good for Jamaica. True, true. One more question before you go. Um, the school that's in a compound, the last time I was there, I spoke with the vice principal who was there. And, um, you know, the school was very culturally rich to me you know of course you know how the whole heap of high tech stuff like you would see you know outside of there but that's understandable but let me ask you about um the culture because when we have a school at jamaica we, we, we just learn on the surface stuff do they teach a lot more maroon and jamaican cultural stuff in the school as far as, as, in, the as, far as in the school it is lived every day by the child it's what he sees so we are not you understand me? The schools, the schools drama forever have won the festival so many years straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand yeah. it. So it's not something we would have loved to see, not just in a compound. For example, here's what we find straight. We have this big discussion going on about the Maroons right now, right? Yet still, mm -hmm. at no point in the primary school, high school, or tertiary education curriculum is there one class on the Maroons. Pray tell, where do Jamaicans learn about the Maroons? In a rum bar? If it's not in the school curriculum and everybody has something to say, where did they get that something that they have to say? That is what is more needed. Greater than the compound, it needs to be island wide where this culture is, is effectively and is understanding of this culture is, 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 is entrenched into the. Somebody's asking mm -hmm. an important question here. Princess is asking. Will the Maroons allow mining within a point zero zero five miles of the cockpit country? And where is the Maroon burial site? We we have always had our specific burial site. Now, bear this in mind. We have been here 300 years. All the Maroon communities sit on national water tables. I Meaning if you go to Scotsa, rolling for water, more town, non-stop water, because it's the access to water that enables us to maintain our liberation. Yeah. Right. So we have long mastered the art and science of how to place our stuff and what we do it around water. We know these hills. You're the petty scientists trying to study it late compared mm -hmm. to what my grandfather or granduncles would have taught me. And taught the average maroon child. We know which tree have water, we know where the water sources are. We we are nowhere near them to damage them. We produce nothing to damage them. Sure, so sure. all of it. So the, to allow any mining within 0 0.05 miles of the Coptic country, we are not allowing any mining anywhere in the Coptic country. Because, for, to give you how dangerous this is, you know, when you consider that my Woolmere and Bridget, big up to all the people who did go Woolmere Boys School, and Woolmere Girl, they're the greatest. When Missy Adam High 
who comes on a TV program. He runs Jamaica Caves. Adam came up here with Jamaica with Jamaica Caves crew and they put on their tanks and goggles and went into down by what we call um, Bad Rock. Down to the cave down by Bad Rock. And they dove. Do you know where they came out? Under the bridge all the way down in La Covia. Underwater. Yes, yes, yes. So that means there's serious water channels that cannot be disturbed because it is the death of this country. To show you how dangerous it is, you know. Remember when they're building the highway and then they go mm -hmm. around the back and they block up the road and the whole of porous the water for five seconds to go and block up the whole of porous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I mean, multiply that by, by 10,000 times and that was what would happen if they did any mining in these mountains. Jamaica would die. Literally. It's true because, um, down in 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 Jamaica, where where I would stay, um, when I'm in the cockpit, whenever we go wash clothes, some 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 streams and some 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 rivers and stuff, you know, a lot of people wouldn't find them. You no. know, you have beat back, um, run away a bit there, so you have some some little no. secret places, and it's like mining there is a scary thing. Look here, and like I'm saying, you have something that's valid, um, untold. You have a natural, well-generated machine called the Coptic Mountain. To generate water, water is, is more valuable than Meaning, you know, here's the world being run under, under the petrodollar. Do you understand the economy that we can create for ourselves under hydrodollar? If water more expensive than gas, we would be back our money with water and we out value. The high, the 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 the, the petrodollar. Um. Okay. So somebody is asking, what is Michelle, nice? Really? You, Michelle, let me explain something. Now, this is one of the clarities that needed to be said. Where did the maroons come from? Don't worry about no slave ship, man, because because that's a fantasy. Here's what you must remember: the maroons were brought here by the Spaniards. The word maroon is an extrapolation from the Spanish word cimarron which means wild and untamed. We were a Spanish problem. Everybody focused on the British because they're a British colony, but forget that we had a 150 year of war with the Spaniards before the 80 years of war with the British. They don't talk about that. The Spaniards brought the Maroons to Jamaica. They brought my ancestors. Where did they bring them from? Because Spain never went to Africa for slaves. In history class at Wilmers, they told me about the Dark Ages, 1780 to 1490. When the dark people rule Europe, they don't teach you that. But do you know what did Spain do with 700 years of black men sexing down and ruling Europe? Where are they? Where's their evidence? Spain had to get rid of them after out of Spain. They defeated us. We invaded 1780. They defeated us 1490 at the Battle of Granada. Detail in history. Spain then had to get all these blacks out of Spain. She took them. And those are who you now see as the blacks in Cuba, Jamaica, Haiti, Mexico, and all of Latin America. It was because Spain had those blacks, while England and France had to go and make a slave trade to get a set of blacks to put to work for themselves. We, the Maroons, resisted them because we were the people ruling Spain for 700 years, and you can't make afraid of you in a seven or even 70. We took over some of the ships and started a war as we landed. What you have been given is a narrative. For example, you have been told that there is a war for the island between Britain and Spain. Yet still, Britain has no records of it and don't teach it, and Spain has no records of it and don't teach it. You are not even told of the time. If you go on Wikipedia and type in governors of Jamaica, you'll find that there is an interlock when both, there was both Spanish and British governors on the island in the transition period. And you are not taught in history class of the, of the Treaty of Madrid that Spain and, and Britain signed for the island. So, so, in answer to the question, um, she didn't come on a slave ship. So, what was her oh, real name? The country ended the war. Everybody stopped They ended a war that was going on 200 years before them. They didn't okay. just come and start the war. Everybody talks of Nani and Cotter. They ended the war. Who paid to start the war? Because that war would have started with the Spanish. 250 something years before, 150 years with the Spaniards and 80 odd years with the British. That's 250 odd years of unrelenting. The Maroon War, the two Maroon Wars were the last wars 
in Jamaica. What the British is telling about, what about the Spanish war? This is where the narrative comes in. Why is this being contained? No, I'm the saying British? the last, the last war, the last war is in Jamaica. What the last war? The two Maroon wars. But clearly, we are now in the in the fervent steps of the third Maroon war, which is a diplomatic international jurisdiction. <laughs> so you're calling this a war? You know the third Maroon war. Then it's you not think Andrew want a war with him? <laughs> All right. Um, may I have to ask you this question? I know I said that the previous one was the last, but this one is most controversial, and it is the talking point of the people. Hi, baby. Say hi, Amir. <laughs> That's your son? No, it's, it's, he's our boss. He's our neighbor's child, but he's in charge of us here. Oh, bossy. All right. Hi, bossy. <laughs> Yes, so um, this talking point is used all the time by people who um, defend the government, especially on social media. Them call the Maroons them sell out because they said the Maroons them, they catch the slaves them and carry them back to the colonizers. What do you have to say about that? I say to them, say, let us, let us look at objectively. How is it? You and I have been fighting a war for 80 years. You put up a white flag and ask for surrender. And you come to the first meeting of both parties with a unilaterally crafted document with only your demands and attempt to purport that on the world as a treaty. A treaty would only have been made after several meetings of both warring parties. That's a scam to show you that it's further another white lie. They're famous for white lies, is what they do. The so called document, the so called treaty says the Trelawney town maroons. No, in 1738, there was no place called Trelawney, you know. There was not a parish called Trelawney until 1717, you know, when they took half of St. Anne and half of, of St. James and merged and called it Trelawney. So how could a 1738 document send the Trelawney to all Maroons? When Governor Edward Trelawney just arrived on the island in 1738? So you're saying that Kojo would have named his place after this white man in Dono? Narrative bunch of white lies that can stand no analytical observation and hold up. Them crush, trick them down, them now go trick I we respect Babylon's money. So you're saying that let me just clarify, you're saying that during the war, the Maroons won the war, and you're saying that it's 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 a bunch of lies where so up, listen up, only to see white people are powerful that you think. You and me and this white man are fighting eight, a war for eight, um, 80 years. And he puts up a white flag. You see, the King of England sent 600 special forces that would be green buried today. Because they killed 598 of them and left two of them. Cut off their ears, tie them back to back on a horse, beat the heart and send them back and said, tell the king to send 60,000 the next time. That drove with the man, they said, we have to make peace because they will not with them. The idea of the land of Luke behind came from the fact that when Kodja put the two men then back to back and send their heart, and the two of them arrived, when I look behind, that's where the concept of the land of Luke behind come from. When Kodja sent back them two warriors then, them two British soldiers. So, you put up the white flag. So how could you, when put up the white flag, come to the first meeting with a document that's the obnoxious and arrogance of white people and the slave master who was, while he was doing that, he was raping and killing blacks on the plantation and so he abhorred the fact that he had to submit to another set of blacks, you know. So that was not written in the treaty that, um... The, yeah, but then that treaty we never signed. That is a okay. document fighting on us to understand, to provide me with a real authentic copy of the treaty. You must validate it. Meaning you have to show me a copy in the British archives because it would have been coming from England, right? So what co the, the copy that you guys have, the copy that the Maroon people have, it's, it's not a modern day printed in... copy. A modern day printed copy. Even if it's 1920, it's modern to a 1738 treaty. Show us a copy in the paper of the day, in the ink of the day. For example, here's one of my books from Egypt. Now this paper is made in a particular kind of paper that a man can set it and say, this paper was done with this, 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 that, at this time. There is realities of a printed document. If I go, show me a copy printed in the ink and the chemical mix of the day you understand me that they would have used in 1738 in the language that would have been spoken in 1738 in a paper mixture 
that would have been used in 1738 arrested some fraud. The University of the West Indies is started by a letter from the Queen as a visitor. We have a copy there with the original red wax seal. Where is that version? Where is the one either in the British? Because everything that comes from the Crown, there's a copy kept in the archives of the British Prince. Show us that. So when people say that the Maroons are sell out and then return slaves, what you tell them say that's a narrative. I am here in a Hong Kong, a slave runway in Magadi or, 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 or um, Santa Cruz. None of these roads existed then. Nobody came up here. <laughs> so how would I know? How would I know that a slave runway in Magadi for go run? Because I mean, I'm going to leave you so, one black, a sexy black woman, and food and water and no master, and left all of that to go run down the next black man, see a white man when we not care about. So the colonizers would not have gotten on their horses and come down there come telling them to say such slave runway i don't know <laughs> come on come on ah, that could get your heart for making sense of it don't all right my brother <laughs> this is this is gonna have the um this is gonna require some research and some further discussion but i thank you for coming on that is what it's going to take but then first it's just objecting the thing how could the British come to the first meeting with a document that them one draft up and call it a treaty. A treaty demands that we both sit at the table a couple of times. So, well, on there, Maroon people then could not did read back in at them time. Is that right? We may have quite possibly more work versed in Spanish because we were in Spain 700 years before that and we were brought here by the Spaniards quicker than we would have learned English. Okay, I see. Okay, very and international law says for a treaty to be valid, it must be in both languages of both parties. All right, okay, that's well, not a white lie that, that they knew what they were doing, knowing that it would cause that foolishness that it's causing today. Okay, well, we have to put this for YouTube because I think that you know people need to think about these points that you raised about, you know, the life, the, the, the lifestyle back then. We have never what thought about it because we, we had to repeat it to get a grade at school. So, so we feel like my mother and father not to say we are done. So you have no time to think about it. You just have to repeat it. Yeah, true. Hey, you you think about think about about those days. All right. Well, thank you for your one hour. For sparing your one hour with us and talking well, with us. Remind the people that you are you are a maroon, full blood royal Ashanti queen, and it is my birthright responsibility to entertain you in whatever fun you desire, Your Highness. Your royalty yes. is blinding <laughs> with courage. All right, okay. Have a good night and take care. Right right? <laughs> yes, all right. No. <laughs> Have a good night, guys. Thank you for joining. A good night, everybody who has been watching and taking the time out to listen. Respect. All right. Yes. All right.